A student is investigating the interference of microwaves after passing through two narrow slits. State the principle of the superposition of waves. So this is a simple definition. The principle of superposition states that when two waves meet at a point, the resultant displacement is the sum of the individual displacements of those two waves at that point. And then for part two, for interference effects to be observed, the waves from two slits must be coherent. State what is meant by the term coherent. So another easy definition. If two waves are coherent, then the phase difference between those two waves is constant. So there is a constant phase difference between two waves. For that to be the case, the frequency must be the same as well. But the thing that gets you the marks is saying that the phase difference between the two waves is constant. Now bear in mind, this is not the same thing as saying the two waves are in phase or in anti-phase specifically. They can be that because if you have two waves being in phase or being in anti-phase, there is a constant phase difference or there can be a constant phase difference. The phase difference can be anything. So the two waves could be in phase or anti-phase or out of phase. It just has to remain constant over time. A student sets up an experiment to demonstrate the interference of microwaves as shown in figure two. A microwave transmitter is placed in front of the two slits, so over here, and then a detector is moved along the line PQ. Maxima are detected at points A, C, and E, so maxima at these points, and then minima are detected at points B and D. Okay, so let's just put our maxima in purple, so A, C, and E are our maxima, and then our minima we'll put in blue, those are B and D. Okay, so then our question is asking us, or telling us, the distance travelled by the microwaves from each slit to point A is the same. State the path difference in terms of wavelength of the microwaves from the two slits at point C and at point D. Right, so looking at that first sentence, the distance travelled by the microwaves from each slit to point A is the same. So what that means is, so we're told, if I were to draw on two rays, so from the top slit to A, from the bottom slit to A, those two lengths are identical. If the two lengths are identical, then the difference in distance is zero. So the path difference would then be zero lambda, or just zero. And at the point where the path difference is zero lambda, we have our zeroth order maximum. So we can say that n is zero at this point. For point C, our next maximum, that's our first order maximum, the path difference there is 1 lambda, and at point E, second order maximum, path difference 2 lambda. So what does path difference of 2 lambda, path difference of 1 lambda mean? So if we were to consider point E, the ray from the top slit does this, the ray from the bottom slit travels to E and looks like this. Those two rays travel different distances. The bottom slit is a bit lower, and therefore the ray from the bottom slit, this one, travels a slightly longer distance than the ray from the top slit, 2 point E. And the difference in distance travelled is 2 lambda. Whenever the path difference is equal to n lambda, then you will have constructive interference. If you have two sources of waves that are in phase, then when the path difference between those two waves that meet at a certain point is n lambda, then you will have max constructive interference. And then at points B and D, so for point B, that is our first order minimum, so n is equal to 1 in this case, and our path difference would be half lambda. And at point D, this is our second minimum, our path difference there would be 1 and a half lambda. So in general, when the path difference is n plus a half lambda, where n is just an integer, n doesn't have to be the actual order number, it's just an integer. When the path difference is n plus a half lambda, that's when you have max destructive interference, which would correspond to these things here. So then going back to the question, it's asking us for the path difference at point C and at point D in terms of wavelength. So at point C, the path difference was 1 lambda, and at point D, the path difference is 1 and a half lambda. And now for part C, the separation between slits is increased. State and explain the effect that this has on the separation between adjacent maxima. 
Right, so the equation that we're using here is lambda is equal to ax over d. The symbol used in this equation vary from a specification to specification, so I'll just explain what each symbol represents. So lambda is just wavelength. A is the slit separation. So going back to this diagram here, it's this distance here. That's the slit separation A. And then capital D is the distance between the slits and the screen. And then X is the fringe separation. So it's the distance between adjacent bright fringes. So this would be X. This would also be X. So the question is telling us that the separation between slits has increased, so that would mean that A has increased, A gets bigger, and we're trying to stay and explain the effects this have on the separation, so X, the separation between adjacent maxima. So if we look at our equation and rearrange for X, X is equal to lambda D over A, and we're not told that lambda and D are changing, so we can assume that both lambda and D are constant. Well, if that's the case, well, then x is just proportional to 1 over a. And then if a increases, that will therefore mean that the separation between adjacent maxima, x, will decrease. And that will be our answer to part C.